Holy moly, maybe my best day of competing at the games yesterday. A second and a first place finish back to back, so special. My first event win as the first event in the Coliseum, it was inexplicable. It also catapulted me to the top of the leaderboard, five points ahead of Frazier, first place winning the games right now. Grateful for the way playing my game got me there. Had a beautiful breakfast with Joanne. My intention for the day, I wrote, don't change anything. This leader jersey won't shake me. I'll continue to play my game, be smooth when I feel I need to, and just like yesterday, turn it on when I feel like I can. Keep smiling, having fun, keep taking care of my body. I am right where I'm supposed to be. I am going to stay in the same space. This is how I'm supposed to compete. Today may not be perfect, same thing goes. Celebrate success, let everything else go. So the first event of day three that they announced was a sprint. I like it, short, fast sprint. Any strategy? <laughs> run real fast. Super unsure about that event as well. I thought potentially I could do pretty well. I, I think I'm decently fast compared to a field of CrossFit athletes. At that point, there were 20 athletes and they were making the cut after the first heat down to 10. They'd cut one more time down to five, just for this event, not overall. Here comes our first heat of men and we have Mr. Noah Olsen, the current overall leader. The guys are rounding the bend. Olsen with a sprint time of 1,500. Olsen the first into the turns. I was pleasantly surprised I won the first heat, which was awesome. So to sprint through the finish line, hear them say that I won that heat, move on to the second one was a, an incredible feeling. He I ended up taking fifth in that second heat, which was last, but there was a chance that my time in that heat of five was fast enough that I could beat out that next heat of five and make it into the final five. But I didn't really think that that was realistic. I thought there's no way that there's nobody in that second heat that beats my time. Lo and behold, it was the fifth fastest time, so I got to move on to the final heat of five. I had guaranteed myself a top five finish. In that moment, I was excited, I felt good, I knew that I was gonna be good for the overall lead. I didn't realize at that point in time that Matt had taken, I wanna say 15th, he didn't make the cut into that second heat, so that would continue to widen the gap. If I took a guaranteed top five and he hadn't done very well, it kind of hit me after, oh man, I'm actually gonna get to hang on to this leader jersey for a little while, which I don't wanna say I didn't believe was possible, but I just wasn't even considering that. I, I didn't wanna think about the lead and points and the leaderboard and all that. I was just kinda gonna continue doing my thing and whatever happened was gonna happen. So I go out there for that final sprint.
Keeping our eye on the finish. Boy, I slow it down just a touch. Who's it gonna be? It looked like Goodmanson in the lead. But McLeod and Olsen not far behind. Olsen will take third. Matt McLeod will take fourth. And End up taking third place overall, which I was really excited about for a pure speed sprint event. Made me feel good and powerful and athletic. That's like one of the things that I feel like everybody watching the games that doesn't do CrossFit can relate to is just running fast and sprinting. So pretty cool to take third on that one. Got to maintain the leader jersey. And there were two more events that evening and then one more day of competition. And as I started to do better and better, I, I realized, all right, this thing is for real. This could be the year that I actually stand on the podium and maybe even win the CrossFit games which was exciting. Third place, good job. How'd it go? That's good, that's good. It's been really good. I just had to burn it down, that's what I was thinking, burn it down. What'd you expect going in? Man, I never know what to expect. I was hoping not to lose. Took a third, I'll take it. announced as the split triplet pegboard double unders we had dumbbell hang split snatches and dumbbell hang clean and split jerks we took the floor pegboards felt really smooth there was only one each round which I didn't feel like was gonna build up enough fatigue that those would get difficult double unders I felt really smooth we were able to use our own ropes luckily I have my super light rpm training rope I think I did the first few sets of 100 unbroken. Once we got into the later rounds, I made the conscious decision to split them in half just to rest my shoulders and my grip a little bit because when I went to the dumbbells, I wanted to be able to do my 10 hang split snatches unbroken, step forward, set the dumbbell down very briefly, and go into the 10 hang clean and jerks fast and unbroken. It's all about grip strength and a little coordination as the opposite arm goes up, the opposite foot goes forward. Fraser holding on to that first place position, but here comes Noah Matt and I were going back and forth on the lead for the first couple of rounds, and then at one point I realized that he was gonna kind of run away with that event. Matt started to pull off a little bit. Things got really exciting on round four. BKG and I started to battle it out. He had made up some ground. And when we made our way back to the pegboard for the fifth and final round, I thought, all right, it's time to turn it up. I've got this. I had a little bit of a lead on him getting to the pegboard. And I figured that if I could get through that smoothly, do the double unders unbroken and hit both sets of 10 on the dumbbell that I would be good to go and lock up second place. Turns out, as I made my way to the top of the pegboard and then back down. Olsen Holt holding on and he's gotta start all over again. It was a cool moment because in the past, I think that was a situation in which I would have panicked and potentially could have started that pegboard too soon, failed again, and catastrophe would have struck. Now that I was kind of playing my game and being a little bit more intelligent about it, I slipped, held both pegs in my hands, took a couple seconds, got back up and finished mine. In that time, BKG had finished his and already started his double unders. I was a little bit nervous there because it was gonna be hard to make up ground with him being that far ahead on that final round. So I did my best to stay composed, did my 100 double unders unbroken. BKG had already gotten started on his dumbbell split snatches. I believe Matt was already on his dumbbell hang clean and jerks at that point. Rather than racing to the dumbbell, 
eagerly to try to catch up. I decided to walk my way from the dumbbell while chalking my hands, take a breath, get composed, and try to hammer out the hang snatches and the hang clean and jerks as quickly as possible, hoping that it would be enough to pass BKG. And it was. On the hang snatches, I made up a little bit of ground. He was still one or two reps ahead of me going into the hang clean and jerks. We picked up the dumbbell at exactly the same time. And just by staying smooth and in control, but being able to have a little bit of a faster cycle rate on each rep of the hang clean and jerk, around rep eight or nine, I passed him, ended up taking the second place position, stepped onto the finish line right behind Matt and knew that I had been able to maintain my overall lead with being able to pull off a second place finish. Line. I was pretty happy with the way that that panned out. It wasn't absolutely perfect, but it was pretty much as good as it could have gone. Made a mistake somewhere in there, recovered from that mistake, still pulled off a second place finish. I was feeling good. So going into the final event of the evening, they announced the one rep max clean in a format that I actually prefer, where it's kind of gauntlet style. There's one barbell in the middle of the floor. We would all have a chance to lift that one barbell at a set weight, and then as everybody hit it, they would add weight to the bar and you'd rotate back through until you failed, and then you would be pulled out. The tiebreaker, if you failed with somebody at the same weight, was a race through five cleans at 295, and that would determine your overall placing on the workout. As I began the event, I really did not know what I was gonna hit in that moment. I know what I'm capable of on my best days. My one rep max clean, my PR is 365 pounds. In my mind, I was thinking, all right, I will be happy with at least 345, pretty pumped on 355, and over the moon if I hit 365. So as I walked to the platform each time, I had this big smile on my face. I was kind of vibing to the music and I was ready to just get under that bar as quickly as I could. Hit 315, hit 325, hit 335, hit 345, and it was still feeling really good at that point. I hit 355. And when I sat back down, I thought to myself, all right, I've got one more lift and I was feeling really confident. Even though ahead of time, I didn't think that 365 was gonna happen. As I stepped up to that 365 pound barbell, I said in my mind, I was like, you're gonna hit this lift. I knew that I was gonna hit it. Stepped up to the bar, felt good. Pull off the ground felt great. It actually felt so good that it, it surprised me with how high I'd gotten the bar. I timed it a little bit improperly and the bar kind of crashed on me down in the bottom. I tried to do a little double bounce. I got it probably 70% of the way up and then rather than really fighting and struggling through the rep, which with a rounded back could have made me incredibly sore for the next day, I ended up missing that first lift and decided not to reattempt it in that 30 second window. But man, I was feeling so good in that moment that on that first lift, if I had timed it correctly and received the bar a little bit higher, no doubt I was standing that thing up, which is pretty cool because that was my PR at the time. It would have been awesome to do in front of everybody else, but the way that it played out, it probably didn't make any difference in the point spread. Missing the 365 and then being able to go into this tiebreaker with Saxon was probably best case scenario for me. So the tiebreaker. Five cleans, four time at 295 pounds. Saxon's incredibly strong as well. I knew it was gonna be a battle. And 
I think that was probably one of the most exciting moments of the games for me and, and potentially for everybody watching in the stands because Saxon and I both stood up our fifth and final clean at the exact same time, pushed the bars down to the ground and dove across the finish line literally at the same time. The only thing that broke our time was the fact that the timing chip was on my left foot, which I was aware of, so I slid and shot my left foot forward and it showed that I had beaten him by 0 .03 seconds and had gotten that fifth place spot as opposed to a sixth place. So that was really exciting. It felt really good to pull that off even though I hadn't hit that lift that I wanted to. All in all, that was about as good as a one rep max clean event could have gone for me at the CrossFit Games, fifth overall. So I ended the third day of competition at the games, only one more day to go, still maintaining the overall lead, wearing the leader jersey going into the final day of competition. Ah, crazy. I would say that that evening and the morning of the final day was when I finally thought, holy smokes, I could actually do this. I, I remember specifically meeting Max in the warm-up area in the morning of the final day and saying, dude, can we really do this? Can we really pull this off? And he said, I think we can. And I was like, wow. That was all I said. I didn't want to get too excited, but I just said, wow. All right, let's do it. Final day. Gratitude. Wow, wow, wow. This has thus far been such a beautiful and fulfilling weekend. There are three more events left and I am currently in the lead by 15 points. Grateful for that. Super grateful that I've had such a different mental experience this year and I've actually enjoyed the week. Currently, starting the day off with a swim in the leader jersey. My intention is still not focused on a placement. It's on performing smart, being me, and enjoying the whole thing. I, I hope, hope that I can maintain the lead but I will not put extra pressure into that. I can do it. I can win the games. I am loved. I am smart. I am the fittest. I'm going to celebrate, thank, and love my people at the end of the day, no matter what. It's going to be a good day. As far as the schedule went, it looked like we had three events for the final day. We knew that event one was gonna start off with a swim in the lake. No idea what events two and three were gonna be, but I was pretty confident in the fact that if I did well in the swim and only had two more events to go, it was possible that I could win the CrossFit Games, which is like mind blowing how big of a goal that's been for me for the last 10 years of my life. Event one was in fact a swim. The event was a 1,000 meter swim into a 1,000 meter paddle for time. Really, Stay it's on. hard to connect, but it takes so long. I felt so, so good during that event. I love swimming. I've been swimming almost my entire life. I was on the swimming and water polo team in high school. So I feel like that gives me a little bit of an advantage. And one of the things that I enjoy the most about swim events in a competition is that it gives you a lot of time to kind of reflect and be in nature and you're quiet and in your own head. And so I always take that time to really appreciate what I'm doing. And as I was swimming, I was ended up being by myself. And again, just thinking, man, this is incredible that this is my job. I'm here swimming through a lake and I've got thousands of people waiting for me on shore, cheering me on, wanting to see me do well. I'm in the lead, like what could possibly be better than this? So I swim to shore, get my paddle board. I could tell that there was one guy ahead of me. I wasn't entirely sure who it was. And obviously the rest of the field was behind me. I got on the paddle board, did my thing, was almost at the turnaround point and I hear somebody creeping up to me on my right hand side and it ended up being James Newberry. So he pulled up next to me, I said, hey Jimmy, how you doing pal? And he was in a really good mood as well. So we chit chatted for a second there. I actually reflected with him in the moment. I said, dude, how cool is it that this is our job? And he's like, it's pretty amazing, man. And I was like, all right brother, I'll see you in a bit. And uh, we made the turn and paddled back, crossing the finish line on that event in third place. 
still maintaining that overall lead was a pretty amazing feeling and just got me closer and closer to my dream of getting on the podium at the CrossFit Games. How was it? Oh, event. It was great. Gain points, the lead had spread out a bit. I think at that point I was 35 points ahead of Matt in the lead. And in my mind, there were only two events left. Noah took third, Frazier took fifth, DKG took fourth. So he spread the point gap, I think, to 35. Two workouts left. Good execution, good workout. I, I wasn't nervous all weekend, but now I have a little bit of uh, tension and nerves and anxiety. So, yeah, but I'm also excited. I mean, if he does well in this next event, he almost guarantees that he gets second, which is awesome. So, I mean, I'm excited, nervous, and just like I'm ready for, I'm ready for it to play out. We get back to the venue and Dave takes us all out onto the competition floor in the Coliseum and announced that what we thought was event 10 was actually going to be events 10 and 11. It was a two part event with 200 point scoring opportunities. Not to say that I didn't like that, but because I had the lead, I wanted to just kind of get it over with. I was like, if we could be done now, that would be great. Dave announced that the first event was 30, 20, 10 calories on the assault bike with toe to rings. I decided I was gonna hammer that first bike to start and then settle into a pace where I wouldn't blow up. And unfortunately, at that point, I had fallen a little bit behind because some of the guys were just able to hammer the bike a little harder. And I did my best to just not lose too much of that lead. And I think I finished ringer one in fourth place overall, which I wasn't pumped on, but also I knew that it wasn't uh, a devastating finish and shouldn't affect the leaderboard too much. But we only had about a minute and a half turnaround before we started ringer two. And the way I was feeling made me a little bit nervous. Really having to get after it on the bike like that fatigued me a ton. I was just thinking, all right, you got this. Just take it one rep at a time. Ringer two was 15, 10, five reps of a burpee jump to touch the rings and overhead squats at 135 pounds. Under that current state of fatigue, was pretty unsure how that one was gonna go down. I felt myself kind of sputtering out on the burpee jump and touches, the jump is relatively high for me. I mean, that's not an excuse because Matt was in that heat and we're the exact same height. So he was able to jump and touch them at a quicker pace. I felt like I needed to really pace myself on those if I wanted to be able to step right to the barbell and do the 15, the 10, and the five unbroken. So I was just playing my game, trying to work my way through it as quickly as I could. A little twinge of regret on that final set of overhead squats. I kind of walked to the bar and took a breath before picking it up. And when I looked at the scores at the end, I took fifth where I could have taken fourth by, I think it was 1.3 seconds. That was a little 10 point shift there that potentially could have kept me from passing that lead off to Matt. He had taken second on ringer one and first on ringer two and that was enough for him to flip-flop over me in the lead. With one event to go, having to hand that leader jersey back up to him was not an amazing feeling, but I still had to remind myself that that was not the way I was playing the game. I didn't want to have everything revolve around the points in the leaderboard. I was there to do the best that I could, and still finishing on the podium has been a lifelong goal for me. So rather than let myself get down, which there were little shifts in energy that I felt wanted to pull me in that direction and, and make me feel disappointed. When I finished Ringer 1 and Ringer 2, I was exhausted. That was probably the most drained that I had been throughout the competition. It was a combo probably of fueling, the fact that it was day four, we'd already done a ton of other stuff, and just the way that workout hit me. 
I was feeling pretty wiped and that made me nervous going into the final workout, even though it had been announced as a workout that, again, is something that I, I really liked. So they announced the final, get back into the warm up area and I was rocked. I was super drained. My legs were really, really tired and sore. And that was kind of, again, starting to shift me into a negative position. I was thinking rather than, all right, I'm gonna crush this last one and maybe be able to win. Instead, I was looking at BKG on the bike next to me recovering, thinking, man, he looks kind of good and strong and I don't really feel that great. I hope he's not able to overtake me and take second place and bump me down to third or off the podium completely. Those are like the thoughts that are in the back of your head and as all competitors, we learn some ways to cope and push them out. But as I started to kind of flow through some recovery on the bike, I went and sat down with Max and we talked about the point spread a little bit. I started to get some food in. I ate two big handfuls of gummy bear, took some post-workout from Evertrain and I could feel myself starting to revitalize and starting to not only rebuild my energy but just get into a better mood and that got me excited to go out there for the final workout. So. I was quite fond of the standard being the final event. 30 clean and jerks at 135 pounds, 30 muscle ups, and 30 power snatches at 135 pounds for time. Trying not to pay attention to the other guys, I still knew that that was an event that Matt was gonna crush. That's pure CrossFit. He's really good at all that stuff. I am as well but I figured it would be a, a very close battle there and I knew that I needed to win that event and there would need to be two or three people between Matt and I in order for me to win the games overall. We went out for that final event and I stepped on the start mat. I can't remember, I think they had We Will Rock You playing. I, I may or may not be mistaken, but I think it was like the boom, boom. And I remember kind of doing the clap overhead with my eyes closed before that final event and just soaking it all in and thinking, this is it. I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna close it out and earn myself a spot on the podium. The event started. I went out hot, but not too hot. Made my way through the 30 clean and jerks about the same time that everybody else had. And when I got on the rings, I had a choice there. I could either go for it and do sets of 10 unbroken, which probably would have bought me a big lead but with the fatigue that I was under, it was definitely possible that I wouldn't be able to maintain 10s and I could fall apart on the last set. So I tried to make the smart decision, which I felt like I'd been making throughout the weekend of just breaking them up into quick sets of five. That was working. I did five and five, moved to the second set of rings. I wanna say just behind Matt. On that second set, we pretty much became neck and neck. And then on the third set of 10, the third and final set of rings, I went four, four, and two, but still was able to get off the rings ahead of anybody else. And I got to the final 30 snatches before Matt and BKG had even finished their muscle ups. So I got one snatch in, and then Matt walked up next to me, and as I was hitting my second snatch, he cranked out a set of five touch and go. And I remember thinking, all right, I almost wanted to drop the bar and like give him a little playful applause, thinking, let's see if you can maintain that throughout. I didn't think that I would be able to do six sets of five touch and go just because of how high my heart rate was and how much my legs were burning. But I was like, I'm gonna play my game, keep doing my singles. And then at the very end, Max had said, go out in a blaze of glory. And if you feel like you can do a big set of touch and go, finish with that. We got to that final set of snatches and Looking back at it now, I, I almost regret not going for all five of those touch and go. I'm really curious if I had been able to, from that final set of five, do all touch and go. Possibly have been able to beat Matt on that. Doesn't really make a difference because even if I beat him and he had taken second, I would not have taken the overall lead. So it's not something that's like gonna eat me forever. But I did two singles and then on the final three, I did touch and go snatches stepped onto the finish mat, realized that I had taken second place in the world at the CrossFit Games. And instead of being bitter about not winning, I let all of that go and I just soaked in the fact that I finally had achieved my dream and was sharing it with so many people. Found Joanne in the crowd, found some of my friends and was just in a state of pure bliss at that point.
Then they started to announce Matt as the winner and he got to give a little speech, which, man, that guy is a stud. There's no denying it. He's an incredible athlete and he earned it for sure. We battled throughout the weekend and it was an amazing experience to be a part of that battle. Definitely props, gotta give it up to Matt. Congratulations on winning the games again for the fourth time. I'm gonna do my best to make sure that there's not a fifth consecutive win next year. And to be honest, finishing in second, as much as I wanted to just enjoy that moment, it was a little bittersweet. It was 99% sweet and 1% bitter because I was so close to having won, but I think it falls perfectly in line with my happy but hungry mindset because I was so happy that I'd finally achieved my goal, but there was still that little internal flame that wanted me to be able to win the game. So I think that leaves me now on a chapter where I am so happy and I love that I've accomplished that, but I am so hungry and I still wanna accomplish the only thing that I've yet to accomplish in my CrossFit career is winning the CrossFit. I don't know exactly what my final legacy will be written as throughout my CrossFit career, but I know that as I've grown as a person, I think people have started to grow with me and life is not always easy. This was actually probably one of the most difficult years of my life. My parents split up and that was tough for all of us. But at the same time, it was one of the best years of my life. I got engaged to the woman that I wanna spend the rest of my life with and I'm so thrilled about that. I finished the highest that I've ever finished on the podium at the CrossFit Games. I've had a lot of amazing experiences along the way. I'm sitting in my first home that Joanne and I bought together. So it was definitely a roller coaster ride of a year, but I feel like that's a cool story to share with people, you know, that things are not always going to be easy and it's not always gonna be a straight path, that there are gonna be ups and downs. And if you push through it and just keep showing up, then good things are gonna happen. And that's also a testament to my entire games career. Every year I've failed to reach my goal of getting on the podium until now. And there have been times along that journey that I've strongly wanted to give up and wanted to quit and thought to myself and even vocalized to Joanne, I don't think I wanna do this anymore. It doesn't feel good to fail over and over again. But I kept coming back and I kept trying and here I am, I finally achieved my goal of getting on the podium. So. If that's inspiring to anybody not to give up, then that's gonna make it even more meaningful for me. Being in the position that I finished in now, being in second place, being so close to winning, makes the happy but hungry mantra even more powerful. And I've spoken about how that is something that fits even outside of the gym or outside of the competition floor, that you should be able to love what you're doing and appreciate what you're striving toward every day, but continue to strive for more and more. And even though I've done really well, it's not well enough and I'm always gonna wanna do better and I'm sure that if I had won, I would still wanna find ways to win in a different way and impact people even more strongly. So yeah, I'm happy but I'm still really hungry and I feel great and I'm not gonna give up and I'm gonna continue chasing my goals and some of them have to do with CrossFit, some of them have to do with just having an impact on people with my brand and people that I've partnered with. So. I'm really excited for what's to come and I hope other people out there are inspired as well and are able to enjoy what they're doing, but to continue pushing onward. And upward. And upward.